Hi folks, in this video we are going to be continuing looking at painting Scabix play pack for a Warhammer Underworlds and in this video we will be focusing on the grimy green robes as seen on the Skaven Plague Monks. Now these will be perfect for any Nurgle miniature, so without any further ado, let's cue the music. The base coat we'll be applying to this Plague Monk robe is going to be a 50-50 mix of red leather from Scale 75 and Deathworld Forest from Games Workshop. And I've thinned this down quite heavily with water due to the nature of the Scale 75 paints. You could use something like Doomball Brown from Games Workshop or any brown that has a red tint into it. And the reason I'm making this mix is I want our brown to still have some earthy green tones into it. So it's going to be a nice transition from this brown tone into a green tone. And this is very much going to be a shadow color. And we're going to be using this to make sure that we get a nice foundation for all of the creases and folds. It's just much easier at this point to go over the entire robes themselves as this allows us to do volumetric highlighting nice and easily without having to worry about how a wash is going to behave on a model such as this, which although it has creases and folds, it does have quite a lot of flat area. So we want as much control as we can over where we're positioning our highlights and shadows. And just as with every layer of paint and the adage applies, uh, multiple thin coats is what you want to apply here. Uh, the two thin coats thing is a little bit nonsense. Uh, in this, I think I use three or four thin coats. Whatever your paint brand you use, it will vary on what sort of consistency you'll need to ensure that you get a nice smooth finish after the end of applying multiple coats. So don't worry if whether you thin your paints, it's gonna take you three or four layers, that's absolutely fine. We want to make sure that we're getting a nice smooth coverage that once dry, we can layer up upon to get a nice solid layer. Here is our base coat mix after four thin layers to get a nice smooth finish. And from here, we can start layering in the greens. For the first green highlight, I'll be coming in with some Deathworld Forest from Games Workshop. And I have thinned this heavily down on the palette. And I'm going to be using a very quick, very scratchy motion to cover most of the areas, leaving the previous mix into all the shadowed areas. When it comes to doing these flat areas, I am doing a very quick sideways motion with my brush and I'm not worried about being neat. I'm not worried about being smooth. And I've kept this thin enough that it doesn't run off the model, but it's still very transparent. You can definitely see that it's gonna need more than two coats to cover up the previous layer. And that's what we want. I wanna go through with this scratchy motion and as well as building up a highlight on this with the nature of this very fast motion that I'm doing with the brush here. This very deliberate directional movement is gonna allow me to build up the illusion of texture in the cloth. And by keeping the paint thin, I'm not building up actual texture. So I'm giving the impression that this is a hempen knitted sort of fabric without doing a whole clumpy bits of paint onto the model and this is a very deliberate motion going backwards and forth here if I had done this in a traditional volumetric style I'd have been doing this thin layering getting a nice smooth blend between the layers and that would look out of place on a model such as this we want to go for that scratchy rough look on this cloth And the real secret to this type of scratchy cloth technique is to keep the paint really thin on your palette and do three, maybe four passes of this scratchy style. And as you can see, I'm being really rough, really quick motions with the brush. And each pass that I'm doing, I'm covering ever slow, slightly less of the previous area that I did. And this is going to give us that nice subtle transition. It's still going to reinforce that, that greeny brown base coat that we made earlier. 
is still much very valid tonally, but we're still allowing this to read as green rather than brown. But as you can see with the second layer, it's still quite transparent, but it's all in these very quick backwards and forwards motion. And the trick with doing something like this is to remember that the pigment is left at the end of the brush stroke. So where I pick my brush up from these really fast motions, that's where the most pigment is going to be. So on areas where it's on the top of the head cloth here, I'm moving the brush into the middle. So where the light's going to be strongest on the top of his head, I'm going to be pulling the pigment up and into that top zenithal aspect but I'm still making sure that most of the flat surfaces have at least that thin tint of green to them with these very thin coat passes. Here we can see what the death world forest scratching motions look like after three thin passes of this slowly painting a smaller area each time. For the next green highlight I will be doing pretty much the same thing but this time with strapping green from Games Workshop. And with this colour, as you can see, I have thinned it down very heavily and I'm starting to shape define the folds in the cloth. Once again, I'm doing this backwards and forwards scratching motion, being very rough and loose with where I'm placing the brush, but I'm still being controlled enough to position the highlights into the areas where the light is going to be the strongest. And this paint is going to look quite stark going on, but due to the nature of how much we've thinned this paint, it's going to dry uh, a lot more faded and a lot more translucent than it initially appears as it's going on. And just like the previous steps, it's just a matter of going around the mini and picking out the areas that you want to have a lighter color in the cloth and do this rough motion uh, to go over these raised areas and I'd cover maybe 50% maybe 40% of the previous colour uh, if you want to go for a more desaturated green robe then you can cover more than that but with this rough motion we are still going to get that transition but it's going to be a lot rougher and it's going to give us this really stylized effect onto the cloth Spinning round to the back of the model, I'm coming in with the second pass of this track and green. And although it looks almost neat at this point in the blend, this is only because I've been keeping each pass of the paints relatively thin, I'm still using this backwards and forwards scratchy motions with the paintbrush to give that textured look within the cloth. This spinning clip is exactly the same techniques applied onto the model with Ogryn Camo. Unfortunately, I lost the footage for this section, but just like the previous steps, it's covering a lighter area using the very thin paint and doing that backwards and forwards scratching motions, pulling the paint into the raised areas where the light would hit to really start to progress this desaturated green look. And as you can see, although it's a very quick motion, it is getting a really striking look upon the miniature. For our last highlight that's actually got a green paint on the name of the pot, I'm going to be using some Krieg Khaki from Games Workshop. I'll be using this color to very much focus on line style highlighting on the miniature. I'm using the tip and the edge of my brush to do very small lines, scratching onto where I think the light is going to be the strongest. As this little plague monk is crawling through the sewers, he's probably going to get most of his light source from above. There's going to be a little underneath, catching the bottom of the robe so the light reflects off any water in the sewers. But we're still going to be focused on using these scratching motions, but we're going to be very careful where we put these. Uh, I'm going to be focusing the top of the arms, his head, uh, and I'm also going to be focusing on things like the tears in the cloth, so where his ears are poking through, those horns, any rips and tears in the fabric. And we're making sure that we're going to outline the underside of these cuts in the fabric with this Cree khaki paint. I'm also going to be picking out any vertical lines on aspects of the cloth which has lost some definition. <laughs> 
So with his right arm here, where it's stretched out to the sides, there are lots of very fine folds in the cloth. And due to the nature of the back and forth of the painting style that we've been doing, some of this detail has been lost on the miniature. So I've been making sure to pick out uh, edges of the cloth and, and adding some texture in and redefining any shapes that might have been lost to a mix of uh, shadows and highlights. Anything that's gone a bit too flat looking, we can use this to sort of pick out the raised areas really nicely. The back of these Skaven Plaguements cloths really give us a canvas to show off this scratching technique to its finest. You can pick an area that you really want to have the light shining the strongest on, and with these really quick motions, you can really start to put in some definition and texture into this cloth with very little work. As you can see, this hasn't been sped up. This is just fast dots, dashes, scratching motions and it gives a really nice effect onto this cloth and it makes it look like you've put a lot more thought and a lot more effort into your highlight placement and gets a really nice finish on the model. As an optional step, if you really wanted to encourage the idea of the cloth becoming completely desaturated and devoid of colour, uh, you can use some Rakar Flesh from Games Workshop and with this pick out with some scratching details a very thin line where the where the corners of the cloak comes together or right down the middle as a reflex highlight anything that you want to really desaturate into this green uh, a th little bit of thin down wreck of flesh and doing some dots dashes and scratching motions can add some really nice tonal variations it's entirely optional and you might find that you don't like this step uh, but I thought I'd include it to show exactly what I did to get the finished product on this Plague Monk that I have done. With the Rekar flesh dried you can now see the effect that that really desaturated colour has had on this cloak. It's all been the same technique that backwards and forwards scratching motions with dots and dashes. With our green colour now done, I have heavily thinned down some more fine brown from Games Workshop and I'm going to be starting to add in some shadows and some dingy colouring into the cloth. I want to give the idea that although this is a green cloth, the Skaven are not exactly the cleanliest of races and keeping their clothes clean is not on their top priorities. So with this really thinned down more fine brown, I am running this all into the deepest recesses of the cloak and on these dangly bits like at the bottom of this sleeve here I'm pulling down the pigment with the brush and then rinsing off the brush and then feathering out the end with a wet brush and I'm building this up in a couple of passes till I get happy with the finish that I get uh, so that the bottom of that sleeve looks like it's been dunked into the sewer come up filthy full of raw gunk and grime and it's the plague monk being a plague monk doesn't care about that sort of stuff because that's the sort of thing that it's going around spreading disease and infection and there's no right or wrong amount of level that you want to do in this or how many passes you want to do though the more you do of this the less it will start to read as green and more as brown. So I really recommend thinning this down to very much a wash consistency, almost a glaze consistency, as you saw on the back of my thumb, and putting this down into all the shadowed and recessed areas. And whilst it's still wet, rinsing off your brush and feathering out the transition so you get a nice soft fade between the two colors. here is what our little plague punks cloth looks like after that monfang brown shadow glaze has been added i've gone quite heavy on this and i've made a point to go in all over the flat areas as well as into all the deepest folds and recesses on the cloth and he's starting to look like a really grimy little ratty boy really emphasize all the deepest folds and shadows and tears in the plague monks cloth I'm coming in with some heavily thinned down to a wash or glaze consistency of the red leather we originally used as part of our base coat mix. I'm doing a very controlled amount of this 
I still want this to very much be the deepest, darkest shadow tone that we're using. I don't really want to come in and use this as a transition fade shadow, unless it's on a really broad area, like at the bottom of the sleeves. And even then, I want to touch on some areas, like at the top of the sleeve here, where I dab a little bit at the top there, and then I wick most of it away in a dabbing motion with the brush. And this is, I'm giving the idea of a stain with this dark color, rather than trying to uh, allow for a shadow blending color. And with that, the robes on this Plague Monk are now complete. I would like to thank you if you've made it to the end of this tutorial. It is rather a long one, but I hope the techniques and the colors here have given you some ideas on how you'd want to play to your own Plague Monks. And if you've made it this far, why not consider subscribing? It's free of charge, it helps me out, and you'll get further videos, including the rest of this series, as they are created into your YouTube feed. So, until next time, folks.